everybody likes a bald spot, and I'm not just talking about hairstyles here. Take a look at this front garden. We've got a really lovely house set on a fantastic street, but nothing seems to grow. It certainly does need a little bit of garden rehab, so I'm going to use my ideas and bring old Baldy here back to life. So what are the problems in this garden? Well, the number one is lack of direct sunlight. We're south-facing here, and although it's nice and bright, we don't get any direct sun at all. The second one, and this is the biggest killer of so many plants, and that is bad soil. It's so compacted here, we've even got moss growing on the top, and the only thing that's thriving are these weeds. The homeowners, they really want something that's low maintenance, so I'm gonna put on my thinking cap and come up with something pretty special. I've been waiting for the phone. Looking at the glow of your promise ring shining so pretty. For maximum impact, I'm keeping this garden really, really simple. I'm mass planting it out, and then I'll have a lovely spot to sit down, relax, and enjoy it all. We're going to have stepping stones through the garden bed. That's like a second hierarchy compared to the main path that goes to the front door. And then in the centre, we're going to have a bench seat just on some plinths, which James is going to mark out. <laughs> I'm putting three steppers in front of our bench seat, so when we sit down, you've got a nice place to put your feet. So I'm just going to lay out all this mud throughout. Now, you don't want it perfectly smooth, but you do want it level, just like that. Now, I'm going to add in some of this to my mix. This is brick tour. You normally use it on brickwork, but think of it like reinforcing in a concrete slab. It's just going to make this mud bed incredibly tough and stop any cracking from twisting. Now, you'd only do this where pavers meet, like this. I want it about 1,200 long. Chop it with some tin snips. And then this gets pressed into the mud. It's going to add extra strength. <laughs> I've left James to finish up the paving and to start turning over the soil, and I'm just popping off to the nursery. A rebel and a roller She levitate like no one No lie I swear I never hold her down And I've picked up the one key ingredient this garden really needs to give it a boost. So if you want to stay The problem with compacted soils is they just form a really hard crust on the surface, water can't get in, roots can't penetrate out, and you just get lackluster growth. So the first thing to do, which Master James is doing perfectly, is turning the soil over. You want to get the whole blade of the shovel into the ground, turn it right over, and then break up any large clods of soil. Now, this is actually not too bad, is it? It's pretty good. But no matter what your soil is like, if it's sandy, if it's clay, if it looks great like this, you really need to be adding some compost to it. Now, you can make your own, but trust me, you can never, ever make enough of your own. So the next best thing is this. This is Rich Grow Black Marvel Garden Compost. We'll mix it through the soil. It's going to help hold on to water, help hold on to nutrients, and really give your plants the boost they need. We're heading out for good time. Stepping stones are in, and it's given our front garden some real definition. We've also corrected the soil, so now we're ready for some planting. These magnificent palms are known as lady palms. They've given us this great vertical accent, and the colour of the foliage against the wall of the house just looks fantastic. Now, these palms 
They don't like direct sunlight. That's why they're going to suit this position so well. They're also down here to give us some instant privacy. You're a diamond, you're a diamond. It's understood. You're a giant, you're a lion. You're looking good. How you make it? How you make it? Look so good. If you haven't guessed already, I'm going for a tropical theme with this garden, and that's because it suits the location. There's not much light, so these lovely big leaves are perfect for the conditions. And because we've improved the soil so much as well, it holds on to all the moisture these plants need. This one is called Philodendron Rojo Congo. It's got these amazing bronzy purple stems to them. And to contrast these thick leaves, we've got lovely silver lady ferns. It's just going to be a riot of foliage through here. To finish it off, these lovely native violets that are going to creep around the stepping stones and fill in all the gaps. Now, if you don't know what plants suit your spot at home, don't be scared to go to the nursery and ask them, because us gardeners, we're happy to give out the information. Now, the finishing touches always mulch, but you'll notice here these stepping stone pads for our bench seat are set 15 mil lower than everything else. That way, we can put a bit of mulch over the top. We still get a nice sturdy pad for our bench seat, but the pads are hidden. It's OK, oh, not to be OK, when everything's broken. Oh, when you don't know, yeah, it's going to be OK. Just got to keep holding. Lovely. Rest up there, Charlie. Oh, you're too kind. <sighs> you know, by adding in a bench seat like this, we've really given the garden a destination and a purpose a reason to come into the space. And it seems like all these plants have actually made the space feel bigger. Together we stand, it's how we survive. Carry the way, keep the spirit. You know, this was an unloved, unused patch. Now, we added some definition with some stepping stones. We really improved the soil with lots of good quality compost and the right plant choices. Now we've got the perfect spot to sit, relax, and watch the world go by. Mm -hmm.